Hallo und herzlich willkommen auf dem 40. Filmfest München und ich stehe hier vor der HFF, also vor der Hochschule für Fernsehen und für Film hier in München und das ist eigentlich ein ganz gutes Motto für Leo Lee, der hier neben mir steht und der heute seine Weltpremiere feiert. It's about 15 minutes and then the world can finally see Sweet Sue. Welcome to Munich. Yeah, well, thank you for having us. It's a great pleasure being here, yeah. I just mentioned to the people that we're actually in front of the film school of Munich oh, yeah. and I just read that you actually got kicked out of film school. Uh, well, it kicked out, yeah. I mean, I just kind of felt it wasn't uh, for me, so I, I actually ended up doing more work on films when I left, and that was kind of better for me. Yeah, I, Kicked out maybe is a harsh... It sounds like I'm some kind of rebel being kicked out. I hope. Yeah, yeah. No, I just... Educationally, it was shit, so I left. Basically. And see what happens uh, some years later. Now you have your uh, debutorial, your, your feature debut. Yeah. And I just watched it an hour ago, mm. and I'm so in love with all the characters that you wrote. But oh, for great. those people yeah. who haven't seen it, yeah. um, can you tell us uh, who are we meeting in Sweet Sue? Who are the people we meet, and at what points in their lives are they? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the film centers around a character called Sue, played by Maggie O'Neill, and we kind of find her in a slightly it's kind, of, it's kind of comical but i suppose quite a depressing scenario at the beginning of the film where she's kind of she gets uh, stood up on a date and then she's kind of back on the dating scene and she works in a kind of party shop and it's all kind of looking quite gloomy and then just as you think it can't get any more gloomy she goes to her brother's funeral and meets a kind of muscly depressed um biker called ron And they get together and it's kind of going well at the beginning and then you realize that his uh, son, who's a in influencer, internet influencer, crashes the film and the whole thing starts to... It becomes problematic for her and they don't, don't really see eye to eye. But, I, yeah. I mean, I just mentioned that all the characters are so lovely and um, I cannot imagine that you wrote the script and you didn't think of these people um, that would finally play them. But yeah. can you tell us a bit about the casting process and the rehearsal? Because I know it's kind of special how you worked. Yeah. Um, well, casting was like half between people that I already knew, actors that I already worked with, or, or just people that I'd admired and, and seen in plays and you know, kind of I suggested them. But then a, a, a kind of huge amount goes to Lara Manwaring, who cast the film, who was actually a pretty amazing casting director. Um, and she just suggested a, a, a lot of people. And they don't tend to like to do um, video castings. Yeah. You know, we didn't for most parts, but we had to with um, casting Anthony because it was such a hard part to cast and we kind of saw like 180 videos and we didn't have the money or the time to be able to see 180 people in a room. Um, so, Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel sorry for actors that have to do casting on tape. I, I think it's, I, I think it's out of order. But unfortunately for this, we kind of had to do it. So, but yeah, so some of the some of the roles in the film, uh, like the smaller supporting roles, like the nurse played by Ruby Bentall, people like that. Like I've known her nearly my whole life, so I kind of she's a friend, and I, so I, I cast some people like that. But then Maggie O'Neill and Tony Pitts and Harry was really thanks to Lara um, and wearing getting those names to me. But you didn't have a fully developed script when you first tried, you know, no, look, I, had to look at them. Yeah, so so it's like a the script is a story, it has beats, it has a written it in a, in, in a slightly conventional way, so it has interior exterior cut and yeah. so it's, but there's no dialogue. So it's very, very clear like where the story's going and what the film's about. But the thing that I suppose is exciting is that even though you know the themes of the film to a certain extent and you, you, you have a good understanding of like what people are about and the characters are about, what you don't know is what they're going to say and how they're going to say it. So there's a scene um, where they're having dinner and when we did the improvisation of that scene, They had previously done the scene where he says to Sue on the phone, do you like Thai, Thai food? And so we got a number that he called in the rehearsal and Thai food came to the rehearsal and they sat and they ate the Thai food. And that scene 
so the the I never the the, the Thai food, for example, wasn't in the script. It was it came out of uh, an improvisation. So it, it's just the way th things happen are slightly more organic, but it's still within that structure and that framework of the story. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, like Hamway, who came on board with the film, uh, when they saw it, they were like, oh, that was the film we kind of expected, but it also wasn't the film we expected. So they kind of knew what they were getting, but at the same time, the, the detail and the nuance of how people were saying, uh, sorry, how people were talking in the film was completely kind of... And you kept that. I mean, the, what they improvised, you kept that. Yeah, but you, but you, but it, but it, but it's, it's, it could be like a two and a half hour, three hour, three hour improvisation yeah. that you boil down to two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. So, but and also you kind of plant seeds and and the fact that um, Harry Trevelyan's character Anthony says to Sue, played by Maggie, uh, in the the uh, the dinner scene, he says to her, "I bet I can guess what your star sign is." Mm -hmm. Now. Previously to that scene, me and Harry had discussed privately that he, the character, is obsessed with star signs. So I kind of knew if I planted that in his in his head at some point, maybe not because I didn't tell him to say it, but yeah. he might organically just say, I, c "I can guess what your star sign is." So you just kind of put ideas into like the character Ron. The fact that he was a mudlarker and into history and stuff like that is something that was invented halfway through the rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't in the script. So that kind of gave him this uh, interest in the past and almost like he wasn't really connected with the present. And so the book he's reading is actually belongs to the art director, mm -hmm. Lucy Red, and she brought that in and he started reading it and then that ended up in the film. So it's little things like that that are unplanned, but as I say, the structure of the film is and solid. And all make for very, very, I think, believable characters and like real mm. characters. Um, mm. You're about 40, I think, um, and the, your story, your, your, your protagonist is mm. a middle-aged woman, like 55 or something, mm. um, and, would, it, yeah. and, and there are not too many stories told I think um, it's still something that lacks in, in movies that yeah. we that we see stories of, of women approaching 60. Um, so what made you go for for a character like that and believing that this is something um, I can write a wonderful story about? Yeah, I think there's a, a couple of things. Like one, I, I I base most of the people I write about on people I've met. So I might I met a woman at a party years ago that was really in, interested me. For 20 minutes, I was talking to her. She was from East London. I thought to myself, she would make a great character in the film. So you kind of start to, when you leave that person, you start to kind of write scenarios about what you think they would be like in in the world. So there's that element. The other ele other element is um, I was really interested in the Ron and Anthony character and the reveal of Anthony. And so I knew that it would be an, more interesting to start from Sue's perspective, come into the story that way. So, and also, once you kind of make a, a decision that you want to tell a story about a woman of a certain age and you just commit to it, you, you kind of realize that it's an interesting thing just like anything else. And then, because there isn't any dialogue and the script is kind of there but not complete, not complete you ask somebody like Maggie O'Neill to come on board and kind of collaborate with you in making the character richer. So her input and that insight is important. I, I, it's not me telling her how to, it's very much a two-way thing between, you know, I understand that character to a certain extent and the things I don't understand about, she knows because she is that. So therefore, together, you, you meet in the middle and you create a character like Sue. And you created an amazing first feature film. I'm much. so impressed by Sweet Sue. Thank and you. how do you feel? The world premiere is just some minutes away. How do you feel about you know showing the film here in Munich? I feel good. I, I, you know, when you make a film, you sit in front of a you know a blank page, and you start creating these characters, and then you rehearse it for for, for months, and then you you know you try and raise the money for years, and all that, and so. To come here and to have the film finished and up on the screen and people reacting to it and either they either love it or hate it either way doesn't doesn't really matter to me but it's just good to to show it to people and this is a great festival so you know 
good, I, good to uh, show it. We're so happy to have you here, Thank and I don't want to waste any more of your time because yeah. it's exciting times. And please sure. enjoy and Thank celebrate with your folks. Thank you very Thank much. So much. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.